Ladies and gentlemen, today I would like to give you a few tips on playing Junjuritsa. I learned it once from a Greek flute player, but I think it's from Bulgaria. And, well, let's have a little listen to it. This one is not a Baia tutorial, so you do need to have the sheet. I will put a link into the comments. And probably, if you haven't played it before, you might press now the pause button. And then get the sheet and practice the notes slowly because there's quite a few to them. Also, it's a piece of two pages length, so I will split it into two little tutorials. Today we will deal with mostly the first page. I love that tune a lot because it's one of those which brings a smile to everybody's face. And I remember vividly when I practiced it, my little nephew, um, who is now 16 and plays the violin, at this time he was three to four months old and he really enjoyed listening. He was lying on the floor and, you know, on his belly and just like dancing along when I played it and even dancing along in 9-8. And here we have the first little issue we have to deal with, the time signature. <laughs> So, we have one of these compound Balkan time signatures, asymmetric, split into 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. And the way I'm counting it, you need to phrase the tune. It's very gentle and we as melody players, we just dance along in this kind of um, time signature and in the articulation. The rhythm underneath will be made by Der Bukka, or Davul or other Balkan percussion instruments, we do not have to worry about this one. So in our one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, three. I was counting now a little bit slower that you can follow it, but I always lead these three groups of two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, to the end of the bar, which has a group of three and seems to be like this rounding up movement. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, three. So let's try to do this in this tune. So you always can hear underneath this Now, the first thing is we need a few little slurs. If you slur two of these four semiquavers, you get a nice phrasing and articulation. Then all those quavers are detached. They come out of the and lead to our group of three and here we have a nice phrasing for the first bar and to complete it, let's add the little ornament. So, on the B, I put a little trill or mordant or balkan trill. So right now I've been doing um, this thing which only string, like, yeah, both string players can do when you basically do a vibrato movement. You link the finger and then you have this fast trill because each time the finger bangs onto the string when you have your forward vibrato movement. So you can do this one just a little bit or you can do a normal mordant. It doesn't quite have the same strength of effect but it still has some effect or you play a normal trill just like with the normal finger lifting thing, how you also play classical trills. So let's deal again with the first bar. The next bar 
is almost the same. The last three beats are only one note, which is good, but the semiquavers, you have the same phrasing, two slurred to separate, but very legato, leading into those detached notes. Finishing the phrase with this first little trill, then again the same phrasing like the first bar, the same trill, and here we have a slightly different articulation. We have these semi quavers at the beginning. I just play them all slurred, but there's nothing wrong. If you do again two slurred, two separate, I play them all slurred for bowing direction reasons, so that I end up on an up bow on my last note, so I'm ready to So I'm ready to start the repeat with a down bow, which is the bowing direction I'm aiming for. Good. So that is our first section, the first two lines covered with repeat. The next section has almost the same phrasing. You have this note repetitions, but I don't do anything different with them. we do have is some more intricate ornaments. So let's go step by step. Let's first do the um, line three, so the first line of this part two, with no ornaments, but with the right articulation. Good, so you can pick up my bowing, two slurred, two separate. And on these last three, I play, again, little emphasis on the first note. And the last note is actually just like a little bouncing off to be ready for the next bar. Good. Now we have some ornaments. previous tutorials talked a lot about this ornament when you go via a higher note down. I'm ending here on the A and I want to go to F sharp and I do this via the B. So is if I play it slowly and extend it in the end and it gives this nice little rolling effect downwards, which makes it just a little bit more interesting and gives a cute little emphasis on it. So let's do the whole bar once more slowly. Now next bar. Here I put my little trill at a different place. So the beginning of the second bar, is the same and I put my trill on the one two three four five on the sixth beat just before the ending so that makes it and then we go on just like before If you work now from the back, the last bar of the second part is exactly the same as the last part of the first bar. So we just have to work on the this higher line, which is a bit more exposed. Well, you don't do anything special. You just bring it out a little bit more. 
And the effect is... That the little trill on this note, and this note itself, has even more emphasis because it has a stronger lending function. Okay, so this means we have been dealing with the second part also. Excellent. Now we have one part coming up which is quite different because it has these little breaks in there. It's almost like a riff. So the best is if you play with the rhythm section, they stop with you. And then you just give them a lot of emphasis. I put on the first one a little mordant. Ah, oh yeah, and by the way, you probably have um, realized already that I play my four semi quavers the same way as before, two slurred to separate. Then mordant and Again a modern, and this is obviously the bigger emphasis. So everything from the bar until there you lead into this last note and then we had this before, so you know the phrasing going straight. It almost feels Suddenly you get a bit angry and then it goes back to being nice and innocent. So hear the anger and hear the innocence. Excellent. And now to finish with this section of the piece, we have the same as the second section again. first section of the piece is covered. So that's where we will stop today. Any questions? Just ask them in the comments. And yes, you will find links to the sheet in the description as usually. Have fun!